All right, Pastor Serge Bati, <laughs> welcome back to House Church, man. <laughs> Thank you. How has your week been out of seven? Um, for the most part, it's been it's been pretty good, pretty happy. Um, we got to blow stuff up <laughs> on Sunday. It went out yes. to the in laws and uh, um, got a chance to just do stuff I haven't done before. So that was pretty cool. Okay. Work is stressful. Okay. long but you know it's still fun okay i want to turn to ask ask me <laughs> <laughs> ask me okay out of seven how's your week been my week has been good however something really remarkable happened two weeks ago that really blew my mind or a couple of weeks ago like absolutely blew my mind okay ask me what it is what is it <laughs> <laughs> okay so we've been doing this kind of conversational teaching format for maybe I want to say we've been doing it for at least six months people are part of our brainstorming sessions and then they get to be a part of the conversation and we just recruit people go hey are you available interested we think you might be great for this theme or this topic how's God speaking to you and we pull people in and have this conversation yeah two <clears throat> weeks ago something really remarkable happened it's the first time <laughs> it's ever happened is someone volunteered they actually made the first step. I didn't approach them. They came to me and volunteered themselves for everything that has to do with this. Mm -hmm. And this person is you. <laughs> Blew my mind. I was, I was, I remember when you asked me, I was, you said, can I uh, possibly be a part of these conversations? And I wasn't even sure what conversations you were talking about. Yeah. I was like, what conversations? You know, like the house church conversation. And I was like, dang, <laughs> someone is volunteering <laughs> to do this. Yeah. What brought you to a place where you said, hey, I want to go through this experience of putting something together and having a conversation and stepping into something that might be new and a little uncomfortable. What brought you to that place? Um, before I get to that, I'm going to share a quick story. Okay. Um, when we were at Shaftesbury and just like before launch, okay. um, I, I like think you're, you're talking about like a few years ago, a few years ago. Yeah. 2019 okay. when new city was, you know, still a baby or hadn't even launched yet. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if we had a, a specific conversation, um, where I think, um, you'd ask me like, Oh, like how would you like to be challenged? And I'm like, I have a hard time mm. praying for people, like praying in front of people for, and so I'm like, yeah. Hey, if you can every now and then, yeah. um, ask me or pick on me to yeah. be the person that does our morning huddle prayer with the worship team, yeah. I think that might help me, yeah. um, get more comfortable with that. Yeah. Um, obviously I was asked more than just a few times, <laughs> just a little more, <laughs> just a little more, um, <laughs> almost every time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. but I feel like that, that process really helped me be more comfortable. Okay. Um, with the thought of having to pray in front of people, whereas like I, um, still get nervous, still mm -hmm. there's a little bit of hesitancy, mm -hmm. but it's much better, um, than what it was, uh, two or three years ago. And so I thought it had been on my mind for a couple of weeks, okay. maybe even a little bit longer. Okay. And, um, I said this, this would be another way to challenge myself. Maybe it'll make me more comfortable speaking mm -hmm. in front of people, That's cool. um, or, you know, help me be more comfortable in front of a camera okay or just like yeah just just to push myself in this way but also spiritually wow i think that's amazing i think that says a lot about what god is doing inside of you i've been really looking forward to this like this is a treat for me <laughs> <laughs> like this is a real treat to be sitting here with you serge you are an amazing friend um among many other things you are a phenomenal producer audio engineer um, you have lots of gifts and talents. You are now a husband. Have you hit a year yet? Uh, next month. Next month. Next month December 4th. Yep. What was the first year like? Uh, it was really good. It nice. was really good. Okay. Obviously, marriage ups and downs. Okay. Um, figuring out how to live with another person is a journey in and of itself. Okay. Um, obviously, we dated um, and we're engaged for a while. Okay. Um, but, you know, until you start living with a person, you, you know, it... Um, yeah, it's it's essentially two human beings have to. So yeah, but it's it, it's been phenomenal. I have a great wife. Dope. I have a very loving wife, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's been great. I'll make sure I keep that in the edit, man. I got you, bro. <laughs> Get them brownie points. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Man.
let's maybe do a recap of what the series has been like so far because we're tackling the very last topic of the series mm -hmm. today. Like we're getting ready to wrap up the series. Yeah. But let's do a quick recap just to refresh our minds on how we got to where we are today. Absolutely. So week one, uh, we talked about how detoxing from comfort is worth it. Mm -hmm. In week two, we talked about the definitions of healthy discomfort and unhealthy discomfort and then identity. We talked about identity, how we are children of God, right? That's ultimately Absolutely. who we are. Um, and then we talked about hearing God's voice. Mm -hmm. um, and then we talked about surrender and obedience. Was that a hard one for you? Yeah. Um, I like having control of things. Okay. And uh, when I feel like I can't have control yeah. over certain aspects in my life, yeah. um, that is really hard to give up. Okay. And... Um, when one of the things God tells you to do is to <laughs> is to surrender everything to me, yeah. um, that's a, that's a little tough. It's a big it's ask. It's a little tough. It, yeah. 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 And then we talked about transparency, mm -hmm. and that's what we've been talking about for the last two weeks: is transparency. How do we step into um, healthy steps of being transparent with each other for the purpose of discipling one another and becoming more like Christ? Yeah. Um, we had some really good conversation last week. Um, at the Winnipeg service and we, you know, heard some different things on transparency from, from the congregation, from each other. Um, and then we also had a discussion on how we as a church, as a new city, as a community are actually stepping into some action. Uh, we were transparent about where we are as staff and leadership mm -hmm. on some of the changes we're processing and some of the things we're thinking through. And we gave almost like a teaser of what our yeah. new series is going to be about. And then this week, we're talking about action. Like, why is action such a key element when following Jesus and detoxing from comfort? I, I don't see the point of having all of this knowledge for me personally, yeah. and then not and then just sort of keeping it there and staying where I'm at. Yeah. Right. The only way I'm going to grow. Yeah. With all of this information. Yeah. Is if I take some sort of action. Yeah. Now that might look different for everybody. Right. Right. Um, right for somebody like again like m might be my in, in my previous situation where you know they're like one of their things is they have a hard time praying for people mm -hmm. um you don't get better at that if you yeah. don't take the action or the steps necessary yeah. um to just do it yeah one of the analogies we talked about was how if you've got a nest right you've got a, a mother bird with baby birds and eventually the baby birds, when they're born, they're just kind of like very helpless. Their mother brings them food, you know, and they grow and they get stronger. At some point, that bird has to leave the nest and fly. Yeah. Maybe that's not the case for everyone because that's quite drastic to mm -hmm. go from like sitting in a nest the entire time to like, boom, all right, you're going to fall and learn how to fly. Yeah. Maybe it's not that drastic for everyone, but that's one way I think of action. It's like, okay, now everything you've seen, you've seen your mother bird fly. You've read the story of Jesus. You've read stories of, of other people that have stepped into this healthy discomfort. Yeah. You've heard from people in your house church and in, in the new city community that have stepped into healthy discomfort. And now it's time for me to actually take a step forward in action and jump. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, th I think the example I thought of when we were having our discussion mm. um, was I am terrified of heights okay. and I'm terrified of water. Okay. Right. Um, but if <laughs> if yeah. I'm at a point yeah. where, you know, like something on, like I, I'm at the edge. Okay. And it's a deep cliff. Yeah. It's deep water. Yeah. If I'm at a place like that mm -hmm. and, you know, I got lava on one side and it's closing in on me and I got this. Mm. It, you ha like for me, I have to give my ch myself a chance, at yeah. least a fighting chance, for yeah. life. Yeah, and um, I look at it that way. Okay. Is if you're if you're in a position where it's spiritual decay or spiritual life, I yeah. think as Christians we owe it to ourselves. Yeah, uh, to at least try. Yeah, try for life. Yeah, and I know it's uncomfortable. Yeah, and you, there is going to be a lot of learning. I'm going to have to learn to swim. I'm going to you, yeah, you know yeah. I don't know how to fly, but I'm going to once I land in that water. Yeah. I have to learn to swim. Yeah. And sometimes you're not you're like, you might not think you're ready. Right. To take that jump and right. to learn how to swim. Right. Um, but again, for me personally, like in, in my, in my case, mm -hmm. I'm never going 
to learn how to swim if I don't jump in the water. Yeah. So at, as, as somebody um, that is trying to be Christ-like, yeah. trying to follow Christ, I owe it, you know, mm. to my spiritual journey to at least take the plunge. Wow. You put that really well, Serge. Do you think there is a chance that we might find ourselves in an unhealthy place, though? where we might be taking action purely just for the sake of taking action? Uh, yeah, that can also sometimes happen. <laughs> right. Um, again, I, I, I'll i speak to things that, that have happened in my life. Okay. I've taken certain action based off of peer pressure. Okay. Um, you know, I've made the jump when I really shouldn't have made the jump. Gotcha. And it, I only made the jump because other people were making the jump. Mm. And so I wanted to be like other people and I wanted to look cool. I wanted to fit in. Wow. But that was not the place for me. It wasn't the right motive. It wasn't the right motive to take the jump, right? Like in that specific situ like situation, yeah. me jumping, yeah. um, I'm not jumping for Christ. I'm not jumping okay. to better my relationship with God. Okay. I'm purely jumping at that point mm. um, to make myself look a certain way in front of my friends, in front of my, my peers. Right. So I guess what we're saying is like, we should assess our motive. Why am I taking action? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then is this action going to bring me closer to God, mm. bring me closer to Jesus, make my relationship better with Christ? Right. You, ha you have to try to figure out, hey, is this actually from God or yeah. is this something that I feel like doing? Yeah. Is this something that I feel like my friends are telling me to do? Is this something I feel like I'm, mm. you know, is coming from a place other than yes. Christ? That's so good. So one of the questions worth asking when you're taking action is what matters to me the most? Absolutely. Um, and I think, uh, I think we alluded to it. I have the Bible open here in front of me and I'm looking at the passage we looked at. Yes. Um, Let's do it's, it. It's uh, Luke chapter 14. Yeah. Um, the cost of being a disciple. So Luke 14 verse 25. Verse 25. That's where we'll start. Um, so large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them, he said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. When, like, when I read the word hate, yeah. um, I look at it a little differently. Yeah. Um, I don't think he literally <laughs> means hate your father and mother, hate yeah. your brother and sister. Yeah. Um, I think that... Um, it's Jesus's way of saying mm -hmm. that I need to be first yeah. in your life. Yeah. Like that is the cost. Yeah. That's a big yeah. ask. It, it, and it's a huge ask. Huge. It's huge. And I would say if, if we're sitting in house church right now, if we're watching this wherever we are right now, if anyone is uncertain of whether they have that clarity in their minds, I would say it actually might be healthy to pause. Don't take any great action yet. Yeah. But reassess. What is your goal? What is your motive? Is it to be a disciple and to make disciples? Is that your highest priority? Yeah. But don't take action until you've counted the cost. Yeah. In, in my life, how I've had it is when God really wants me to do something or wants mm -hmm. me to go a certain way, mm -hmm. um, I feel like not a physical nudge, but yeah. there's always that like, hey, hey, you know, mm. um, you were supposed to do this today. It, can we get to it? Oh God. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. And a week goes by. Yeah. And you know, I have, I haven't done anything. I haven't taken any action Yeah. Um, in that regard. Yeah. And then again, it's like, here's a voice. It's like, Hey, you, you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. You remember that you said you were going to do it last week. Is, is that going to happen? Yeah. Um, I had, uh, an example in my life I can mm -hmm. think of first one that comes to my mind is the first time I lifted my hands. Um, okay. During, during a time of worship. Okay. Um, I always thought <laughs> mm -hmm. that, you know, um, I'm going to look foolish. I've never okay. done this before. Okay. Um, growing up in church, yeah. um, sitting in pews, it was always, you know, you, you did your standing and right. Not no, a lot of expression, not a lot of expression. Okay. And so it wasn't something I was used to until I, you know, I branched out and, you know, we, like we were at a church together mm -hmm. and I would see people with, I'm like, like, what is really the point of it? Yeah. And you know, I started getting the nudge. Like, mm. Hey, try it. Okay. And it would always be like, nah, nah there's people watching. There's sure. people watching. Yeah. Until one time, I'm going to do it. Okay. Let's see what happens. 
And bro, let me tell you, it was one of the most freeing things yeah. to begin my journey with Christ that I, I could have ever wow. done. And yeah, it, this like the spiritual nudge is, mm-hmm. it's, it's not always upfront. Yes. That's a great way, man, yeah. to identify what your action might be. Mm-hmm. And I think that's worth chatting about. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Like, have you ever experienced a spiritual nudge just in general? Like, have you ever had a time where you're like, man, I feel like God has asked me to do something and it keeps coming to mind. How, like, how did you respond to that? Mm-hmm. And then maybe let's even talk about whether we felt a spiritual nudge during this series. Yeah. Like, have you felt a spiritual nudge during the series? I like this term, spiritual nudge. <laughs> I think we should make it a thing. It's the only way I could find it's, words to describe it. <laughs> it's a really good way of putting it. Okay, let's chat in our house churches and then we'll jump into the next part.
reading this book, um, Emotionally Healthy Discipleship, Peter Cesaro, he um, points out something that I think we've known to be true. It's just really nice to hear it again. And in the beginning of the book, he kind of tells the story of a woman that is sick, but her sickness is not supposed to affect her hands at all. Mm-hmm. Um, it affects different parts of her body, but it's not supposed to affect her hands. And I think it's like a doctor um, that's telling the story of a patient of his. And the doctor is kind of confused, or this individual is confused. He goes, how come she can't use her hands? Her sickness shouldn't be affecting her hands at all. Yeah. He kind of does this experiment because he's wondering if she's ever used her hands or whether everything's always been done for her. So he kind of tells the nurses, hey, next time you bring food for her, why don't you put the food just a little out of reach, almost as if it was done by accident, Mm -hmm. um, to see if she actually eventually reaches out and starts to use her hands. And and she does. I think a lot of times we've just enjoyed the comfort of having somebody else do all the hard work. Yeah, yeah. Everything being done for us already. And we have fully functioning hands that we should be able to use but we actually don't know how or not doing it because everything's always been done for us. Yeah. And what we want to do is move towards a place where we're going, no, actually, I'm going to step out and use my hands. If I'm capable, then I'm going to do it and not rely on somebody else to do all the heavy lifting for me all the time. I think that's the sign of a disciple that is growing and maturing. Yeah. That's who we want to be. Absolutely. Um, and like an, an, an analogy that uh, came in my mind, like a little picture that was in my mind while we were discussing, yeah. um, this topic was, yeah. uh, being in a locked room. Okay. The lock is in front of you. Yeah. And you're stuck behind those doors. Yeah. Right. And you have the key in your hand, mm. whether you, whether you've done the work to find the key or whether God has literally placed the key in your hand. Right. Right. right? You still have to. Unlock the door. Unlock the door. And walk through it. Yeah. Um, even if God blows the yeah. lock yeah. off the door and opens it wide open. Yeah. Wide open for you. Yeah. You still have to be the one to take the step outside. To walk through. Yeah. That's so good, Serge. Yeah. You have yeah. to be the one that takes that takes those steps. Yeah. You know, he's not gonna drag you out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's still on you to take those steps, take that action to step out of that door yes. and walk through. Yeah. Like a, an active life led by the Holy Spirit brings you to a place where you're walking in community with others. Yeah. It brings you to a place where you're reading scripture and, and then you have everything you need to take a step forward. I think that's empowering. That's so good. It literally is everything. Everything. Everything you need to take that step and God has already put inside you. Yeah. And that is crazy to think about. It is. <laughs> like, wow. In my wildest dreams, it's like, the Holy Spirit and God, you know, all of that, we, we're equipped. We yeah. already are equipped. Yeah. Let's look at a story that highlights this really well. So we were looking at Jonah. Yeah. This has to be one of the most known, most popular Bible stories. Right at the very beginning of the chapter, it says, The Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. That's a name for your future kid right there. Yeah. Amittai. <laughs> Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. So he has a spiritual nudge, right? Yeah. Would you say he's got the spiritual nudge? Absolutely. He's heard God's voice, right? He's gone through the comfort detox series where he's learned how to hear God's voice. And he's like, I heard God. God said, go to Nineveh. And he's like, I'm going to try and do the opposite. I will invest my money to buy a ticket to go the opposite direction. So then Jonah eventually gets on this ship. There's a major storm that happens. People are like, what the heck is going on? You know, eventually Jonah reveals, it's because of me, man. God gave me a message. (laughs) He gave me an action I was supposed to take. I didn't take it. They throw him overboard. He gets swallowed by a whale. While he's inside the whale, he has a moment where he goes, man, God, I'm so sorry I turned away from you. He has this prayer, he says to God. 
He says, all right, God, I, I want your presence again. I, I, I repent. I'm turning back towards you. Mm -hmm. God spits him out, or the whale spits him out. Yeah. <laughs> and then God says again in chapter 3, it says, then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. First time, Jonah said, nah, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time and said, get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I have given you. This time, Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh. So this time he actually steps forward in obedience and goes, okay, after that experience, I'm actually going to step forward and do this. I mean, come on, who hasn't done, who hasn't done what Jonah <laughs> at some point in their life? Man, I've been Jonah <laughs> so many times. God tells you to do something, nudge, nudge. I, so I, I, I hear you, but I'm going to go this way. This way. I'm going to go this way. In my foolishness, I think I might be able to escape yeah. <laughs> the thing you're calling but me to. Even here, I think what we spoke about earlier, mm -hmm. you can see. Mm -hmm. um, when God takes him out of the whale, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't put him in Nineveh. Mm. And and tells him again, hey, I want you to go there. You've got to go. You've got to go. You have to travel there. God is almighty. God is all knowing. God can do anything. Mm -hmm. But even then, the responsibility, like you said, still lies on us mm. to take those steps. Mm -hmm. Right? Even even our best friends, our families, our spouses can't can't carry our cross. Wow. We have to we have to be the ones carrying it. Yeah. My growth is not their responsibility. Yeah ultimately it's mine that's a different mentality there's people that will help you do the legwork yeah but they will not do the legwork for you yeah that's hard to hear that is hard to hear but at, at, at the same time you know you have all the tools yeah and so in my mind if i have the tools yeah then it makes sense to me yeah that you know i can't rely on you i can't rely on pastors i can't rely on yeah. to take the steps for me yeah i can rely on you for advice i can rely yeah. on you to walk with me in this action yeah but i can't expect you to take that yeah. action for me yeah it doesn't work that it way. doesn't work that way so let's take time and ask ourselves some questions like do you relate to jonah mm -hmm. um have you had an experience like this in your life what does that look like in your life what hindered you or stopped you from actually falling through with what God has given you? What hindered you? Was it fear? What was it that caused you to feel like actually gonna go the opposite direction of what God is saying? Yeah. Let's chat about that and then in our next part, we're actually going to get very practical. We're gonna have pieces of paper that are gonna be handed out and we're going to take some time to reflect and actually see what's the action that God is calling me to today. But first, let's just have this discussion of have you ever felt like Jonah? What was that like in your life? What hindered you from actually following through with the action God has called you to? Mm -hmm.
to wrap this up, let's get very practical. Let's continue to be practical. Um, let's put a plan in place for how we're going to actually step out in action. So um, pieces of paper are going to be handed out or have been handed out in your house church. Um, the space for two things. A space to write down an action that you feel God has been calling you to. Have you had the spiritual nudge of something God is saying? Hey, I want you to take this step. We're going to give people time to reflect on that. A few minutes. Uh, there'll be some music on. Take some time. Talk to God. Write it down. Uh, yeah. Maybe something won't come to mind right away. Maybe as you go home and sit with this, something will come to mind. Write it down. Um, and then there's going to be space to write down a name of someone you trust that you want to have a conversation with where you go, hey, this is what I feel God is calling me to. Yeah. And I want to share that with you so you can help me be accountable to you. You know what I mean? Like yeah. help help me on this journey where I'm making sure I'm actually stepping on the things God has called me to. Mm -hmm. When you do this though, don't you think it's true that the results are completely out of our control? 100%. Um, you even see in Jonah's case yeah. at the end of the story mm. where he is, I think, in a, in a sense, livid with God mm -hmm. because God ends up sparing these people. Mm -hmm. And Jonah went in there yeah, completely expecting God to follow through on what he had originally told him. Yeah. Go there, tell them I'm going to destroy this place. Yeah. Um, and God does the exact opposite. And yeah. Jonah's like, I've done this for nothing. Yeah. And um, so I think... Um, and then God sort of goes through, gives him an example mm. of no, like, you know, I care for these people. These are my people. Yeah. They've, tr they've decided to come back to me. Yeah. And so I'm going to spare them. Yeah. So I think when we take action, yeah. um, we should take action because the, because the Holy Spirit is telling us to take action yes. and then leave the results of what happens after that yeah. completely to God. Yeah. It's a hard thing to ask. It is. Again, surrender comes into play here. Yeah. As, as people who are wanting a relationship with Christ mm -hmm. and wanting to live um, in those footsteps mm -hmm. and to follow Jesus, yeah, it's worthwhile um, to just take the action yeah. and leave the rest up to God. Yeah. I'm a football guy. Okay. Jesus is my quarterback. Okay. What do you mean by that? Um, so essentially, um, the quarterback <clears throat> gets the ball. Yeah. And... He decides where it goes. Yeah. You might, um, there's plays drawn up. Yeah. There are certain things that need to happen on a play. Yeah. But sometimes that doesn't always work out. Mm. And so our job as players playing around that quarterback is just to do our job. Yeah. Right. Uh, there's linemen that block yeah. in front of the quarterback. Yeah. Sometimes they have no idea what's going on back there. Right. Right. But wow. their job is to protect the mm. quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, irregardless of what what the quarterback ends up doing, yes, that isn't their like what the quarterback is doing back there. That's up to him. It's up to him. He makes a call. He makes the call. So as long wow. as everybody else around the quarterback does their does their job, runs their route, blocks properly, wow, and you know takes action on what is written for them to do, run the play, um, run the play, yeah, um, and let the quarterback decide. Wow. Where he's going with it. And, and sometimes so it can completely be different from what you had drawn up. Yes. Yeah. Like, I love that because, I mean, isn't the quarterback like one of the most valued positions? One Fa of the most important positions? Usually the face of the team. <laughs> it's the face of the team. And I love that we're not putting ourselves there. Jesus is that. Jesus is the quarterback. And he makes the call. He decides how this plays out. I just do my job and step out in obedience. Absolutely. That's so good. That's Absolutely. so good. Okay, let's give people space to kind of reflect on this, write this down. Um, let's support each other. It might be even worth discussing, you know, after we've had some time to reflect. Mm -hmm. um, how can we support you as a community? What makes you feel supported? As you step out into this action, what makes you feel supported? And you don't necessarily have to share the action that you've written down, but maybe you can share, hey, this is how I feel supported. This is helpful. Because then maybe as a community, we can actually walk alongside each other and support each other in ways that are actually helpful. Yeah.
with my life, my everything. My tears, they fall before you. For what your love has done to me. I see your yes to me in your name. There's action involved, more than words, more than a song. It's my life laid down. I will love you with my yes and with my obedience. I will love you with my yes, Jesus. I will love you with my yes and with my find it in Jesus Christ. It's my joy to lose my life and find it in Jesus Christ. I find it in Jesus Christ. And it's my joy to lose my life and find it in Jesus Christ. Come on, yeah. we find it in Jesus Christ.
thank you so much uh, for doing this, Serge. Um, again, just blows my mind that you volunteered, <laughs> that you said, hey, could I be a part of this? Um, but I think you, I know you were the right person for this topic and for this discussion because you were already living out what we were talking about. You had no idea we were going to be talking about taking action and you were already doing it. So I, I really feel like God was already preparing your heart for this conversation. Um, you're radiant. I think that's the word that comes to mind. Like as I'm sitting here and I, and I see you talking and hear you talking, you know, you're just, you're just like radiating with this passion for walking with God. Like I can sense that in you. I see that in you. Thank you for going on this journey. Let's do it again. Yeah. Thank you for allowing me to sit here. Sure, <laughs> Appreciate man. it, bro.